Greetings and welcome to the basement. In this video, we are going to create a very, very simple game in Unity. It's not going to look like much since we'll just use the Unity prefabs and default material, and it's not going to be particularly engaging on the gameplay environment. But the importance of doing this is to gain the confidence of completing a project. Yes, there are longer, much longer, tutorials out there for far more complete projects, but they will be a lot more difficult to finish if you've never done a single Unity project before. This is going to be very basic, mainly helping you get used to using the editor and workflow, creating objects, setting up flow graphs, so on and so forth. And it'll give you a nice little confidence booster to be able to say, yes, I actually finished this. It will also make for some very excellent practice, deliberate practice, which is something I will talk about towards the end of the video. A couple of other quick points before we dig into the meat of things. The Unity, the Unity version for this video is 2020.2. And I assume no prior knowledge on Unity other than having a very basic level understanding of the interface itself, specifically hierarchy, inspector, project, the console window, and having the ability to add in packages. And the only package we will be adding in is the Bolt Visual Scripting System. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Like I said, we're going to be using Bolt for the visual scripting. Now, Bolt has been acquired by Unity, but it is not listed in the Unity Packages section yet in the Package Manager. So the first thing you need to do is you need to go to the web, go to the Asset Store, and find Bolt. Generally speaking, the easiest way to do that is to do a search for the word Bolt, and it should be the first result after the ad. Make sure that it says Unity Technologies as the publisher and that it's free. If it is coming from a different studio or if it is charging you money, then it's not the right package. There are a lot of companies that have done add-ons for Bolt. So you want to make sure it's Unity Technologies and that it's free. If it is not associated with your account, then you will see the option here to add it to your assets. If it is already added in, of course, I could click on the Open in Unity button here to import the package into Unity. But I'm going to show how to import it in as a package because that's going to be the more common use case. You will typically not be using the web browser to open up packages, although that is certainly a personal preference on that. In Unity, I'm going to go to Window and Package Manager. I tend to keep this window open and docked up here. Now I'm going to have to change this to My Assets Packages, not in Project, but rather My Assets. Now, if you have just started with Unity, you probably can see Bolt right here. I can't. I've been collecting asset packages for a very long time. So I am going to have to use the search bar here to more easily find Bolt. If you have never downloaded the package before, this button here will say download, or if you've downloaded it and there's been an update since, this will say update. You will need to download and or update the project, and then once that has been done, you can hit import. When importing a package, you can choose what it is that you want to import in. 
I am going to go ahead and stick with all the defaults just to make this process simpler. Now, once this is finished, we have not actually installed Bolt. As this folder here would suggest, we still need to actually install Bolt. Now you have two options, and to make them appear a little bit more readable, I am going to change the scale on my projects folder here from icon to list. I generally prefer to work in list mode, but that is certainly a personal preference. You will see that we have a net three and a net four. That refers to which version of the .NET framework that you want to use, which is part of the C-sharp programming language. Unless you have a specific reason for doing otherwise, I would recommend that you use the .NET 4 package. So before I install this, I need to make a change in Unity because this is not the default for Unity projects. So I'm going to go to Edit, and then I am going to go to Project Settings. This is another window that I tend to keep docked up here, because it's something that you fairly commonly need to access. And the item that you're going to want to take a look at is the Player Settings. All the way down at the bottom, we will have the option some play oh and it's all not collapsed there we go there it is api level .NET standard 2.0 i am going to want to change that to .NET 4.x and then upon doing that i can install bolt i'm going to double click on the package I'm just going to keep everything as it is and hit import. Not much else to do while this is importing. But as you can see, that step should go relatively quickly. Now there's a couple of options that we need to set up here. There's actually quite a bit that you can do with Bolt, but in this video, I'm only going to be covering the basics. First up is the naming scheme. How do you want things to be named? I would strongly recommend that you use programmer naming. And if you happen to be a student in my courses, this is actually mandatory. I won't assist with the Bolt flowchart if you don't have it in programmer naming mode. Why would I recommend this? Well, it makes things a little bit easier. Should you ever want to transition to writing C -sharp code instead of using Bolt, you're already familiar with how things are named. And because if you know the C -sharp names of things, it actually makes it easier to find. So programmer naming, I would strongly recommend that you use this. Assembly options. The only time that you would ever actually have to mess with this is if you have a custom library that you want Bolt to generate hooks for. Since we are not doing that, we are going to move on. And then finally, you can de define which types do you want uh, hooks ready for in Bolt. Again, if you have custom code, or if you have a custom component that you want to be listed here, this is where you would set that up. But again, in this video, for this project, there is no need to do that. So I'm going to finish by clicking Generate. And it will go through and generate all of the hooks and links and everything that is necessary for Bolt to operate.
as we hurry up and wait for it to compile. And is done. And I hit close. And now we are ready to go. Now, I don't like working in the sample scene. It's precisely that. It's the sample scene. It's a sort of a default space for you to experiment with. And there was one point in past versions of Unity where there was just something very strange with the sample scene that could potentially cause code to not work. I am paranoid. I'm sure this bug has been fixed for a very long time, but because of that very strange bug, I personally just do not ever want anything to do with the sample scene, so I am going to immediately create a new scene. I like to use keyboard shortcuts as much as possible because it's faster. And I would strongly recommend that you learn some of the basic keyboard shortcuts, such as Control N will get you a new scene. Now we can choose to do an empty scene or a basic built-in scene. Since I know I need a camera and I know I'm gonna need a light source, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the built-in scene. Uh, load additively. This we want to leave unchecked. Unity has the ability for, to load and run multiple scenes at the same time. This can be a very useful technique. If you have a very large game and say want to break things up into multiple scenes and you want to manage you know, having two or three scenes loaded at any one given time, that can be very good for performance reasons, but again, in this project, we're going to have a single scene, so I do not need to check that. I hit Create. Nothing's going to change visually because the sample scene and the default empty scene, or the default uh, scene here, basically identical. But I can tell I've created the new scene because now it says Untitled. Now I am going to save this, and I am going to save it into my Scenes folder. Is this required? No. Is it strongly suggested? Yes. It might not seem like it for something as simple as this project. But if you do not put your files, if you do not keep your project organized, your project files organized, things will become a mess very, very fast. And it will cost you time. It will cause bugs. And if you're working in a team environment, people are going to struggle to find what they need to find. So we always want to keep our projects as clean as possible which means saving your scenes in the scene folder. And speaking of keeping things cleaned up, uh, once you install Bolt, you do not need this install Bolt folder anymore. So I am going to get rid of it. And while I'm not going to need them for this particular project, there's a few folders that I tend to create as just a matter of course, I generally tend to create a folder for materials, for macros, for Bolt. Folder to hold my prefabs. And a folder to hold images. Like I said, in this project, I'm not going to be using any of those folders. But that's what I generally tend to do as a baseline for organization. Again, is this required? No. Will your game still work if you don't do this? Yes. Is it a good idea to do this? Yes.
So I've got my folder set up. I've got my scene. Let's get the scene itself set up. Because this is a space game, right? We're, we're making a, uh, a game where you're the valiant pilot of a starship trying to get through an asteroid field. Last I checked, flying through an asteroid field um, probably shouldn't look like this. If Hollywood has taught me anything, it's that space doesn't look like this. So I want to change that. There's one mandatory spot where I need to go to change this and an optional one. The mandatory one is the main camera. And what I want to change on this is I want to change the clear flags. In other words, every frame, what does the camera reset its image to? I'm going to change the clear flag from the skybox to a solid color. You can see the preview in the main camera window here changes to reflect this. And then I'm going to take the background and I'm going to click on the color option here and I'm going to set it to black. So now my game window is just pure jet black. Now this is not reflected in my scene view. This does not matter. The game view is what matters. Game view is black. That's all that matters. It still bugs me on a personal level to have this skybox here when I don't want a skybox. To change that is a few more clicks. For that, I need to go to Window. I need to go to Rendering. And I need to go to Lighting. Typically, I will keep my lighting window docked over here with the hierarchy because, again, it's a fairly common window to need to manipulate settings in. And I'm going to go to Environment. I'm going to go to Skybox. I'm going to pick on the selector icon, the little circle with a dot in it, and I'm going to select None. I can either double click or click and then close the window. And then I'm going to swap back to the hierarchy window. Now my scene is set up. I no longer have that skybox in the editor scene. I have a jet black background in the game window. So I am ready to begin constructing my spaceship. But we'll tackle that in the next video. If you found this video useful, thumbs up would be appreciated, but not so much. The thumbs down button is right next to it. Until next time.